drop my link. That's kind of funny. So maybe I don't have to... You're all still there. Can you see me now? <laughs> Did I shock the system? Uh, it seems to be working on my phone now. Yeah, no, I can see me. I can see me. Okay. No reason to post a new link then. Learned something new. <laughs> I can't type either. Learned something new today. Let's null bind. Shit, I was on time too. Damn it, this is what happened. <laughs> anyway, hi. <laughs> I'm going Viking today, as you can see. Well, a little bit more casual today, but um, we're actually making new designs this year for our t-shirts and hoodies. We're keeping the logo, of course, but it'll be interesting to see what we come up with. So I think, I think um, it's so hard to be a Viking needs to be a t-shirt again, though. So maybe... Maybe we get to do that. <laughs> okay, I have to say hi to you, and then we'll get our needle binding done. Until then, Heidi Lisa is here, so I have to show you what your brother did to his tunic, but this is an old tunic, so it's okay. Hey, Max! So, if we turn this there, look, there's holes. Let's see, I'll move that out of the way. He's got holes on his tunic, so they have to be fixed, and then I thought I'd show you how I'm doing it. So he's got this big one on his tunic. I don't know if you can see how big it is. This is Runa's tunic. So what I've done, I'll put this whoops, down so you can see a little bit better. As you can see there, it's been cut. So you lay it as flat as you can over a piece of fabric. In this case, I'm holding it. You can see it's over a fabric. And yeah, it's probably smoke. I think you're right. Shame on him. Anyway, and I'm going to teach Luisa how to repair because I think he needs it. <laughs> he needs more repair between him and Carl. Okay. Uh, anyway. So this is you put you, this is one way to patch. You can either just put a patch right on top and then stitch it down, or to make a little bit more of a fun patch, you can put it underneath and uh, have it all lay flat, and then you stitch it around. I don't know if you can see it, but there is really thin. If I use my needle binding needle, sewing thread here that's black, and it's just basted down. He's got some more loose stitches here, or it's more loosening here, so I have to put something here as well. Um, and then you lay it as flat as possible, and then you stitch around. I've done a chain stitch around here. I'll show you there. Like a chain stitch or something uh, around wherever it's not completely worn out. And then you go back around it one more time with the buttonhole stitch, which is what I did here. You can see there it's the buttonhole stitch all the way around, and then you can cut the loose threads. And we've decided this looks like a lake, so he's going to get a a boat in here a little embroidery because if you're going to patch it you might as well make it fun but so if you've tried the buttonhole stitch and needle binding this is going to look really familiar so first i need to attach a new yarn yeah it's attaching a new yarn so then i'll go on my back side and i'm not going to even attach it with knots i'm just gonna weave the yarn in a few times here to get it to the start point. Thought I'd show you this while I was at it. Since we're indoors today, it's crappy rainy weather outside. It's still way too dark uh, to see. And then I thought I was going to have a lot of time, but look what happened to my internet. Okay. It's, there we go. So I just tack it down a little bit. There's no knot, and then I push it through to the other side so that it comes up at the top of the last buttonhole stitch I did, which is about here okay and then don't pull it so tight that it pulls out because remember you didn't knot it just not tight enough so then you hold the yarn above sorry i like to do this sideways for some reason but you can do it top to bottom too and then you go in the new one and you go up so you go under the fabric and up and then you have this yarn going over just like the buttonhole stitch and needle binding Actually, this is, I believe, I don't know which came first, the uh, the stitch embroidery um, or the needle binding stitch, but I believe, uh, I, I believe that the buttonhole stitch got its name from, from doing, because this is how you'd actually do buttonholes around on a piece of sewing. And again, go around back and then catch the yarn. But I'm going over this chain that I made, and so that makes a nice little edge on it, and it also like really reinforces this thing big time. 
and then later you can cut the fabric around on the back side so that it's just where it needs to be. But he's going to get a Viking ship in there or something, so it'll be fun to see. Anyway, so that was my little fun thing that I was working on today instead of needle binding like I was supposed to. So to say hi while you stare at my work, okay? You can look really close if you want. <laughs> there you can see the chain, and there you can see all the way around. Uh, let's see if I zoom up here. Nella's here, and Torben is first. Torben thought he was first, but on my list, Nella beat you. <laughs> she said, how little one's enjoying winter. How, Torben, how are your kids enjoying winter? I've seen some pretty fun pictures of you being drug on a sled by one of them. <laughs> Charlotte is here. It's windy and rainy in Bergen as well as here. Uh, Lisa and family is coming over soon. Oh, so nice. Lisa Tura, you have to tell her I said hi. We miss them. Uh, summer's coming soon, and it's going to be full house in Easter here, and that will be fun. Garcia is here from Holland. She sent a funny joke to Carl, by the way. That was fun to see. Um, Torben says, well, Torben got a new sled, so he and I have been doing some scary stunts down the roads, and I'm lucky to be alive. Um, you're letting him... <laughs> How old is he? And you're letting him drive your sled? It's a cute picture, by the way, if you see him on Facebook. <laughs> ah, there you go. You can stare at more needle binding here. Uh, Audra is here. Audra, did you see what you did to Carl last week? What your beer did? <laughs> he head first into the snow. I think we figured out it was around minute 65 or something like that. But it was absolutely hilarious. No, that was not planned. I didn't know he was going to do that. Uh, quoting Danny Glover on This is Torben, I'm getting too old for this shit. Oh, I've been quoting him a lot lately on my stuff, too. <laughs> uh, Amro is here, uh, and then we see that I'm having, oh, Karsten and Dordo are here as well. Um, and Prude is here trying to figure out my problems, but we got it figured out. Uh, it just seems to be I was low on space or something, so I deleted 218 images that were sitting in my photo trash, and that seems to have done the trick. So crossing fingers that we say stable connection now. Uh, James is here. He's working on a needle binding version two, doing the Coptic stitch down the bottom of the chain stitches. Ah, okay. Those will be fun. The Coptic's not my favorite, but a lot of people like it. Um, the only reason I don't like it is because of the unraveling thing. Uh, and then, of course, it looks so much like garter stitch that I would just rather stitch it. You can stitch through the bat, knit through the bat loop, and it'll have a similar appearance. But, but that'll be fun to fun to do anyway. Uh, it's also very time consuming, which is not very impatient if you haven't known. Uh, let's see. Torben says, I can, can't see Carl getting tipsy in the chat, so you best restart the router. <laughs> now, it turns out it's my local phone, because my computer, it wouldn't even show that it had started. It was just sitting on the uh, opening screen waiting for Karen to join, and then I, my phone kept saying reconnect over and over and over again. I think around 12th time I gave up and thought I'd restart it, but I was so sure that it was going to, uh, um, drop the link, but it didn't because it never actually picked it up. But it was weird. I could see the chat scrolling up my screen on my phone. Arlene says, uh, yep, I shocked the system. Always do. <laughs> Audra says, let's see, a little bit further up. Uh, looks like you're trying not to broadcast today. <laughs> now I tell them what was happening with your family. I'll let you tell that if you like to. But yes, uh, we hope you're doing okay. Uh, we went through something similar, and it's uh, not a fun thing to go through, so I'm glad you took the time that you needed. And then Robin's here, by the way. He's making Steve learn this. Good. <laughs> you will like it. Uh, and then Ar Arlene says it is minus 36 this week in Canada. So we have a bit of news. Maybe I should let this one. Uh... We got water now. <laughs> the problem is we have way too much water. <laughs> the... Of course, the pipes burst in the basement. We were out for almost three weeks uh, without water, and then when it finally came on, uh, there's a couple of pipes that burst. So uh, we'll have a plumber over on Monday. It's not freezing, at least, uh, and it's only in the basement where there's nothing stored. But, uh... <laughs> you know, it's insured. But thank God we're renting. <laughs> That's just that, oh, my God, because I would not want to deal with that in my own house. No, nope. the one in Vespi I have is uh, definitely okay on that one. But we need a needle bind because I'm late. Okay, so uh, let's do, okay, we'll just use this as a wonderful background, zoom out a bit. So our bogus is stitch of the month, and you'll notice that my blanket hasn't uh, grown that much. I'm missing five days. Uh, this is Monday, so I've been writing. The rest are pretty much all going to be um, 
brown because I've been productive. I just been far behind. Saturday, last Saturday turned out to be a fun day, so we got a shock of yellow in there because the um, the fortune telling dumplings was so fun uh, that I definitely thought that had to be a fun day. So we got another yellow in there. Um, and then I have to have, this day is a little different. I'm trying to think of whether I should give it a day because it's not necessarily mood, but things really didn't go according to plan due to weather or unforeseenable events, which means uh, I think yesterday's day is going to be about the same. So I'm s thinking about adding in blue or gray, but it's going to be a new color uh, for unplanned events. <laughs> didn't go as planned. So on Monday, we had severe weather. We had landslides. Everything started melting, and all that snow that we got last week started pouring down the mountains, and that picture that I put on the thumbnail is just one of the avalanches that have come down. Uh, so we didn't get to drive when we were supposed to. <laughs> Ended up being one extra day, so I thought maybe I'll put that one due to um, uh, natural weather problems. There was so much ice, too, and flooding. Uh, and then, of course, uh, yesterday I might, I'll might do the same color as a, kind of an unforeseen thing because the pipes burst in the house, and that didn't go quite as planned either. But I have to, I owe some time on here. So then I have the hat. I got it done this far. This is the one that was on the cover last week. Let's see if I lift it up a bit. This is the Arbogo stitch as well. Uh, this is the Arbo, with the exception of my screw up line. This is Arboga from the right side, right side, technical right, actually this way, technical right. And this is the technical wrong side, which looks a bit like um, vertical knitting, kind of, if you look this way, except for this row because I screwed it up and I went from the wrong way. So this is actually, if you, yeah, this would be, the, anyway, it was, it, things didn't go as planned, but it didn't change the side. So I'm leaving that sucker in there. Um, but anyway. I'll show you. This is also, then we started playing with the connections. This is F1, with the exception of the brown rows. The brown rows I did B1, and you can see the little ridge there, uh, which, by the way, I must have been asleep because I didn't do that for the rest. I only did it for this line and this this line, but the all the other lines I forgot to do B1, so... Crap, I just noticed that. <laughs> Anyway, it's a nice hat. It's nice and warm. It, this, the change was very subtle. It was just a show. But I thought for every brown one, I was going to do B1. And there's no way in hell I'm ripping this back up. It's it's going to be a fun hat just the way it is. It's a little bit of a pointy hat, uh, but not too much. But it is super thick. And this is a little bit thicker than the Letlopi I have on here. This is just regular um, igloo yarn, I believe it is. Just Viking. No, this is something different. It's two-ply. Anyway, it's going to be cheap yarn. Cheap uh, cheap yarn for Norway, um, but plant-dyed. Uh, I plant-dyed this with onion, and this is plant-dyed with coffee. That's a plant, right? So Anyway, but the way to do our boga stitch, if you didn't see it yesterday or last couple weeks, um, I'm going to grab a length of this yarn. This is also plant-dyed, by the way. If I go down, so I have to start our boga. Our boga, you need um, four loops. No, three. Sorry. Hey, Matthew is here from uh, Egan, by the way. Thirty-four. You guys are having nice weather, so you're above zero. You're about on par with uh, with uh, Gudvangen right now. Although we're seven hours ahead of you. Let's see. One, two, three. I need three stitches for our boga, if I remember this correctly. Nope, four. No, three. Okay, let's see what happens when I don't work on my blanket for a while. And I'm going to just, because it's a start stitch, I'll make them a little bit smaller. So you go behind one, or you have one, two, three. You go behind the third one, and then turn and go through the, I mean, the, behind the second one. Twist and go through the first one, or the third one off the needle. Sorry. And then back and through the first one and under that. And that's our boga. But now the loop points the other way, so it's... Second loop. Let's see. Second loop goes wrong way. Then the right way through the third loop. Then go back over through the first and second. So this was our boga. We did it quickly. You can go to neulockandtot.fi um, or, yeah, neulockandtot on, uh, on YouTube as well. And you can see Sana's videos are really good to, ex to explain this. So second loop this way, third loop that way. And then back forth. But I'm going to do this quicklier now. Oops, sorry, I'm holding it up too high. But I'm going to go through it quicklier now because I need to do a connection row. I was going to do the X last week, and I was correct when I was that I thought I was putting it on wrong. That X was under the X is what it's called. Not X, but under the X. Um, 
and then to see what that did. So now you got to tell me, what did you guys do this week, and how are your blankets? How many of you guys are doing mood blankets, by the way, and how are they going? If you want to do a mood blanket like this, um, this is not, it's actually, mine's a very small, skinny mood blanket, because I know when the summer months come, I'm not going to have time to do a long row. Uh, to go through it really quickly, you do not have, one color represents each mood. Um, I'm, you, I'm, I have different browns and different reds, but I'm calling it red, and I'm calling it brown. It's because that's what the yarn I have is. Um, but I, you can do one row per day if you want, or one yarn length per day if you want. Some of them are doing sweaters, which I think is a great idea, anything that's a very time-consuming project. But I made mine short because I, I wanted to do clean rows, but I didn't want to go over 400 stitches. That's something only uh, Australians do, apparently. Raymond <laughs> and, and uh, Kiwi from Bergen does that too. It was really long. Anyway, um, but the idea then is, this is what, I mean, 20, 20 days is about here. Twenty. This is about 20 days, I guess. So... Um, well, maybe, anyway, it was up to, up, this is up to Sunday last week. So if I, if, it, when I get about halfway through the year, if it's looking way too long, uh, I will either keep going and make it a shawl, uh, cause it's pretty tall, or I will make a second one and then stitch them together. I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, and then I'm also doing my uh, new row every time. You can see the starts here and the ends here with the exception of that row where I screwed up and I ended up starting on that side and going this way. But uh, you don't have to do that either. You can turn it if you want to. I just wanted the look to be like this as if I did it in the round. You can also do it in the round and cut if you want. Uh, and then later I'll figure out what I want to do with these ends. I have something, an idea in mind, but I'm not going to reveal that until the end of the year because I might change my mind in the meantime. But uh, so if you wanted to do a mood uh, stitch along blanket, Maria Lind Hale has created a group on Facebook so you can join. Um, and follow along and see how everybody else is doing. If you're thinking, well, crap, January 1st is coming, gone, and I'm not going to, I don't know what my mood was like for the last 27 days, you can start uh, today if you want to. You can make it January 27th from, from January 27th to January 27th. It doesn't have to be a calendar year, just a 365-day-plus project, however you want to do it. So you can still start if you want to, and you don't have to do our bogus stitch. Uh, Kiwi did and, and Raymond did theirs in... Uh, uh, Osla, Osla, not Oslo, Osla stitch, which I think is absolutely crazy, but it's a really beautiful stitch. It's just very time consuming. <laughs> uh, so you could do that too. What mood is for what color? So for me, red was stress. Uh, this is, I'm calling these ones both all red. Uh, so red was stress day. So this is the first, basically I had to drive from Celia on the 1st of January to Gudvang and stop picks to muff and get over to Voss by a certain amount of time to get my kids on the train so they could take the train to Oslo. And there was like everybody and their cousin was on the road because driving black for Christmas. So that was a stressful day for me. So red it is. Brown I called a productive day. You can do whatever mood you want. Um, but I, I don't know, my mood doesn't change too, too much or so. I didn't think it does. <laughs> so I went with productive mood. Uh, yellow was the fun mood. This was Jose's birthday. We all went out and watched Carl get drunk and Jose play music. Uh, and this is uh, last Saturday when we did the um, fortune telling dumpling. So I thought that was a fun day. So that got yellow. Green was my sick day. I was I had a migraine that day, but fortunately it was a day off from work. So hopefully we don't see too many green days. But now I have to introduce another color, and it's not necessarily a mood, but it was didn't things didn't go as planned today. Uh, due to naturally <laughs> events that beyond my control. So like extreme weather day was, uh, which would be the next one. And then of course, yesterday, the pipes bursting. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, yeah, Peruta's written in there what it, uh, what had happened, why she's been missing anyway, but she's been saying hi every weekend to such. So I will let you read that in there if you want to, but, um, Anyway, so we've missed her, and we feel for you, and I'm very happy to see you back again. It's nice to see the blue name on there. Uh, let's see. Nella said she found a very nice skein of yarn today at the secondhand shop for 4 euro. Uh, the original price is 20 plus euro. Too bad if it only it was only one skein. Ah, but, but, but. This one, I only had a little bit of the brown. And I have one skein of this one, and I'm actually going to run out of this one until I get to about here, and then I'll finish it with the brown, I think. Or I have another dye, which is slightly darker, or yellower than this, that'll go on the bottom. So you can do that. You can you can do something that does one skein and then just throw in a little something. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at next week's stitch, or next month's stitch. And I'm not telling you what it is, but this is next month's stitch. So 
I made wrist warmers with these. They're actually up on Instagram, something that was pulled. I finally managed to get up on there. But I only had this much left. <laughs> and I really love this yarn. It's so nice. Um, so I wanted to, I thought I'd mix it in with a bit of this one, which I only had a little bit, but I didn't get as far as I wanted to. So there's actually two colors here. There's a slight color shift between this one and this one. So I spiraled it. That's what, this one is a spiral too. It doesn't look like it, but that's why there's two ends because I started with two spirals of the same color. So one goes this way and the other one goes that way and they spiral around and I did that so it would kind of stagger it a bit where they landed. And I did the same thing here as well. This one's a little bit more of a pointy. So you can see there's two different starts and it goes like that and that. So this is next month's stitch. I'm not telling you what it is. I also ran out of that color, so now I'm on that one. But you never know. That one skein could... You can have fun with it. This is the right side of this unknown stitch. And this is the wrong side. Next week you get to find out what it is. Hey, Carl. You got your beer? You got your glass ready? Okay, we'll get, we'll get Carl started on his beer, and then I'll do a, a connection for you. Uh, you. You got your glass. Let's see. We're looking at my nose. It's not very pretty up there. There he is. Hello. How was the snow last week? Uh, I told Outer she needs to see what happens when she when you drink one of her beers. Yeah, the snow was cold. <laughs> you want to tell her what you did? Uh, doesn't she already know? I don't think she, I don't know if she saw it yet. No, so because she wasn't on at the time. Or at least at least she was quiet on the time if she was on. I asked you. I asked Carl how deep was the snow outside, and then you know there's the table with all the snow on it and. How did Carl decide to tell me in his wonderful Lithuanian beer way as to how uh, how deep the snow was? I put my face on it. He face planted. He, he flew and did a face plant. <laughs> Just... I took a lot of still shots out of that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I've been sending me some messages. I haven't answered. Oh, yeah. As far as I can see, it's fine. The bronze. Yeah. You got to explain what the question is first, and then you can say it. Well, uh, she's making a type of turtle brooches. Uh, the original finds were in bronze, uh, mm -hmm. but she is wondering if you can make them in silver. Yeah. And I would say that the Vikings would probably do that unless there is some kind of strong cultural reason not to. And I can't for the life of me see one. So mm -hmm. I think that should be perfectly fine. And it's also pretty typical. Uh, I don't know if it goes for... And no, I don't think any of my rings are in this category. No. But one ring we make ourselves pretty well uh, is a silver ring, but the original is a gold bracelet. Oh, so yeah. uh, we... Um, it's pretty common to just keep the uh, kind of the essence of the thing. So it's still jewelry and it still has the same pattern. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> how many people do you know that walk around with gold bracelets? Uh, it would be If you really loved expensive. me, I would. <laughs> no. Actually, we found out. Okay, so the bracelet that you got me in silver, by the way, thank you very much. Um, we have the, the same one is available in gold. And we went and checked out to see how much it would cost if we got it. It was more than my car. Yep. So, no, we're not going to. He doesn't need to adorn me in gold. Are you nuts? Gold is pretty expensive. I would expensive. just, I would lose it. And, and uh. So, Carl's beer, by the way, uh... Winter not, which means the winter night beer. She says thank you, by the way. Uh, this one's by Lom, uh, but it's spelled L O M B, but the brewery is L O M if you see it on there. Uh, Lom is how far away is Lom from here? About a couple hours? Yeah, you have to kind of drive around some mountains. Kind of on the way to Hammer, etc. Dover. It says Lager Otto Pasa Calda o Merke Winter Kvelder, which is a um, uh, lager, what is it? A storage beer? I forget what lager is anyway. Stored beer. Stored beer for cold and dark winter nights. You can't have it yet. Dupe raud far give me smock of caramel look either. A deep red color with the taste of caramel and uh, spice. And this was also a vin monopole wine or er, beer because it's 6.5%. I'll remind you that Carl face planted after 5.8%. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that beer was 5.8% that you drank and you face planted. Our boss thought maybe you'd watched Melody Grand Prix, which is Eurovision Song Contest, by the way. Nori was having their uh, semi-finales or whatever. Did you just chuck yourself in the face with the bottle cap? No. I <laughs> chucked it somewhere near my uh, brooch. Did it hurt? No. Okay. Somewhere near isn't <laughs> enough to hurt. I don't know. Some guys are real sensitive. <laughs> uh, I have not seen the Eurovision Song Contest, but apparently the uh, options for Nori was not looking really good. 
Because no, Toro thought that was worth face planting. I never do. We have won that thing not twice. Ah, uh, we have the Alexander Reebok. He did the best showing of all of Eurovision ever, uh, with the three hundred over three hundred votes, or just about every country voting for him. Mm. That was in two thousand nine. I remember my kids were born that year, right around the same time. And then you have Bobby Sox back in the eighties. And a lot of swing, a lot of rock and roll. I think there is one more. <laughs> So I think there is three, but normally we are uh, not yeah. scoring one on this. No, normally Norway sucks. So Norwegians like to watch the Eurovision Song Contest to make fun of themselves and everyone else. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, it's nice dark. It is a red looking beer. Now, if you can see it, let's see. I'll put it on you. Okay. How's your beer? Torben wants to know. He's been waiting for you to get drunk. Outer says, I uh, have to have bronze, but I want to make silver self. Yeah. Ooh. I used to use bronze all the time, too. Oh, Kiwi's here, by the way. She said her turtle brooches are bronze as well. Uh, but she's considering getting them gilded so that they resemble the archaeological finding from Voss Moore. Oh, that, we've seen the Voss ones, actually. Those are quite cool. And then Marie, um, the French one, found one from Stalheim, which is where her, well, she married to Stalheim. Yeah. What's, how's the beer, by the way? And then we'll go back to that. Uh, it's good. It has kind of this weird homemade... Uh, taste. Yeah? I have to see this picture. Weird homemade taste, but are you tasting caramel? Uh, not in uh, not in the conventional sense. It's not like a caramel liqueur. Okay, I uh, am looking at the picture for the connection under the X, but the sample that she's using is not the same stitch I'm using, so that doesn't quite line up. But I will show it. Okay. So if you're familiar with Noe Lakentat's page, let's see. This is how she goes under the X. But I'm not using a finished stitch. I'm using a turning stitch. So that's under the X, as they call it. Under the Parikala style. I cannot do finish. Uh, but it says it also involves a plated edge. Ah, that's why I can't do it. I'd have to do a plated edge. Well, for crap's sake. Okay, we'll revisit that one later. I'm going to have to do one row with a plated edge in order to do that. And also remember, if yeah. uh, your wife goes under the X, it might be time for the divorce. <laughs> You're pretty proud of that one, huh? Mm. How long have you been holding on to that? Since you said under the X. <laughs> I have an X. Okay. All right, so I'm going to... Okay, so if you don't know what plated edge is, we'll show you that real quick. So now I'm going to have to... I started to join my row to what I thought was under the X, which would be like here. But I don't have the X like her picture does because I didn't do a plated edge. So if I did one more row, I can go ahead and do F1, but I'm going to do a different one. Um, let's see. I'll do it after. But if I did one row where I went over, that's the plated edge. So that means all my <laughs> stitches aren't overlapping the way they do in hers, where they're going, they're going this way instead. So, okay, but there's another one that we're going to do called M1, so I will do that. This, see all these bumps in the side here on Arboga? This is the middle bump, so I could start with that one right there, and this is M1. And then do the stitch the way you normally would. What are you playing with my mood? I di I'm so far behind on my mood blanket now. Uh, I counted <laughs> correctly, I had a happy day on the 19th, and I'm just wondering what the hell was that? The happy day, that's actually one week ago, this is Saturday. This is uh, the day we did the fortune telling dumplings. Ah. ah, you need to recap. You need to recap. What is the fortune telling dumplings? Um, why was that so much fun? <laughs> what is your fortune? Well, no, just recap what it is for those who'd missed it. Uh, it's, it's at the very end of last it's week. It's a Russian thing. Uh, well, it's a northern Russian thing. The southern Russian thing. The northerners don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, and you put uh, trinkets and uh, kind of messages in dumplings and then you eat the dumplings and you get the prediction of your fortune okay so what kind of fortunes could we get yes and we could get no fortune that was a dumpling but it was just a plain dumpling but what else could we get uh money uh, that means if profits. you get a coin in your dumpling uh if the dumpling is very salty it means that you have to work hard uh if there is a string in it, it means you go on a journey. Yeah. If there is a ring in it, it means you're getting married or engaged or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, what was the reasons? 
Ah, oh, the re Oh, pregnant. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, there was a key. If you got a key, I'm not sure if I'm joining this in the same spot every time, but it's just to see what this does. What happened if you got a key? Did you say that one? No, I don't know what it is. Uh, the key means you would be good at going into property mm. or getting property. Uh, if you got a string, did you say that one? Yeah, that's the journey. That's the journey. Uh, there was, yeah, lots of sugar in one. I didn't it's remember good getting life. those. Good life. Uh, so there were five of us testing fortune dumplings. What did you get? Uh, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Thank God for that. I Runa got, got pregnant twice. A little bit of money on the string. A little bit of money on a string? And a string. And a string, yeah. So the string means you're going to go on a trip? So, needle bending festival in Denmark is unavoidable. I yeah, no, we got to go. It's in August this year. In Udense, Udense, Udense. Um, and then... Uh, Oh, by the way, we should probably request those days off and maybe put that down as an ambassador day. Go and represent Viking Valley. Uh, then we can write it off as half of a work expense. Um, and then uh, there was the money. So the coin. You got a coin in yours, which means you might come into money. Or you should come into money. I know. Yeah. I got... What did I get? <laughs> That's something that should make you very nervous. <laughs> I think you look pregnant. I got one raisin and two rings. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm supposed to get married twice and have so you plan more to pregnant. Go under the X? Am I going under the X? <laughs> yeah, I'm done with the X. Okay, so now we have enough of M1 uh, in our boga to see what it kind of does. I did not do a plated edge, um, but you can get an idea. Oops, I'm going off here. There you go. So that's an idea of what the M1 does. This is where I started a different stitch and then I changed. This is M1. Uh, what was the pepper? There was pepper and salt also. Do you remember what that one was? Salt was hard work. Pepper, I don't remember. Mm. I don't remember anybody got pepper. I think we all just thought that was normal seasoning. I know Isak seemed to get everything. Uh, he kept getting the money. I think he had like three of them, and he went, there was a big coin and a regular coin, so you could come into a lot of money or a little bit of money. Mm. Anyway, so this is uh, M1 mm. connection. And the front side, and this is on the back side. It gives like a little raised lip there. And if you ever want to do ribbing, uh, in needle binding, you can do M1 and then back one. <laughs> so if you do one row M1, it makes it want to lean forward like this. But if you do one row behind, um, it will want to make it bend like this way. So if you do one row M1 and the next one B1, you'll get a bit of a ribbing. Um, but it would be better to work that as like a, a, a piece like this and then sew it together at the bottom, so otherwise you'll have that jog, which will kind of mess everything up. Okay, so now we know what M1 does. Uh, I'll catch up on chat a little bit while trying to do a row with a plated edge so we can try that under the X again. Uh, do you want to tell them about the pipes? I told them we finally got water in the house. Uh. <laughs> Go ahead. It was a really magical evening for us. Yeah. No, we came back from Celia very late uh, yesterday. Yeah. Or very early yesterday is correct. It is more correct because... Yeah, we came at 5.30 in the morning, morning we entered Gudvangen. So we decided not to go home. So we just slept down here and went directly to work. Yeah. And thank F for that. Because when we got home, we kind of heard the sound of water running. So we went into the basement and it's raining from two spots on the pipes. <laughs> yeah. Old house, uh, by the way. So we... Uh, turned off the water, we had a talk with the house owner and he's going to send a plumber sometime next week. But I'm just so glad that we slept at work because if we had started digging around with this at 5 a.m. in the morning... Oh, God, we never... I mean, because we were supposed to work in four hours. <laughs> yeah, there would be no chance of There's no way. In time. But the funny thing is, actually, we left early from work. <laughs> uh, we, we left at 2 o'clock when the, when the village was closed uh, because we figured we needed more sleep. Um... And that's when we heard the pipes were burst, so we actually didn't end up going to sleep any earlier. But then again, if we went to sleep early... We went after the meeting, so it was closer to 4 o'clock. Yeah, 4 o'clock. But if we had gone to bed at 4 o'clock, we would have been up in the middle of the night, and we would have officially been vampires. Yeah, so maybe it was a good thing. I'm just... I'm fine by that. Fine by, by that. It doesn't matter for me if I work at the beginning or the end of no. my awake period. See, I do, because at the beginning of my awake period, I am not very productive. Uh, I, I don't get anything done before work. Um... But after work, I kind of get the second wind, and that's when I start hitting the brown productive days. 
Uh, okay, anyway, a little bit more, and I'll have a row of plated edge on here that we can play with. So we can go under the X again. <laughs> Are you excited, Carl? Go under the X? Um, you know that I have an X, too. <laughs> yeah, your X was a little bit more colorful than mine. <laughs> you might have more fun. <laughs> no, okay, I gotta catch up on chat, too. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay, Max, oh yeah, I was going to ask a bit more here, then we could, uh, Nell says uh, her bling is some sort of brass uh, that looks almost like bronze, at least now, uh, so we'll see in a few years, yep. Uh, well, the ones that I got were, they were silver-plated brass, weren't they? The ones that I got, just the new ones, the ones from Darius. That I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Dar made them. Darius, he goes uh, around to markets, but, but he... Um, I think they were they were silver-plated brass anyway, so they look like silver. It's a cheaper way to do silver. Um, uh, it wasn't any cheaper than the bronze, that's for sure. It was it was more than the bronze. But um, as long as they don't, you know, get too much wear and tear on them, they will show silver for a, a long time. If I remember correctly, I said what is about 8 kilograms per gram. Yeah. So it's... Well, it's expensive, but it's not that expensive. No, 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 and we'll still get them. But it, we thought this would be a good one to wait until until getting the silver ones because to get silver one of them is a lot, but two of them, you know, you gotta get a set. That's a lot. So this was one way to do silver before early. But one thing is the brass kind of came through a little bit. I think it was brass. Maybe it was bronze. But the other one came through a little bit, and that's why they had a bit of a shine to them. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Matthew says, I'm going to make a vacation blanket, buy local yarns from shops when I visit. <gasps> Good plan. I like the vacation blanket. So are you going to go with the mood on your vacation? Because I'm hoping you have nothing but a fun mood on your vacation. No sick days. No, uh, you know, crabby under the weather. Uh, or are you going to go with the uh, weather or um, how will you do? Or, you know, I'm kind of curious. What are you going to use for your, um, your mood swing uh, colors? Uh... What mood is the yeah, color? Yeah, we covered that one. What mood was what color? Um, it went a little too far back. Uh, Torben says, my rug would be all blue, exhausted, haven't slept since 2020. <laughs> That's a good mood to have. Uh, but it's kind of fun to see how moody you are. And others, uh, for one thing I did notice on mine, um, I'm a hell of a lot more productive than I thought I was. There's a lot of brown in there. So, hey, I have, I don't know where I keep coming up with these excuses of not being productive. I think I'm just productive doing things I'm not supposed to be doing. <laughs> uh, you have a touch of project ID, ID. I did. I started next month's project when it's well before. Mm. And I have this not, this isn't done. This isn't done. Well, the blanket's of course not done, but now I'm behind. Um, I'm going to show this in a second when I splice more, but I got even more. I got um, another project I just started. Because I have to. This one I've been talking about doing for weeks. Uh, people ask me to make socks, socks for them. I don't like making socks. Uh, because it's really hard. It's tricky to do it without the foot. Although a lot of people have a similar size foot to me. So it would fit anyway. Um, but I usually just say, I'll, I'll put you on the list of that size I'll try to do next. But I make no guarantees that I'll actually get it done. Because it's time consuming and I have no patience. Um, but uh, there was somebody who asked me for socks over a year ago. And he wanted to know if he could sweeten the pot. I told him I make no promises, so he shows up with this wonderful needle. I have to show you this. Uh, it's a unique needle. Uh, so this is even Dolls. Um, he uh, Dolls Dolls Grand Dolls Gord. Sagerbrot. I'm sorry, even Sagerbrot. I'm thinking of the Danish one. Oh, this one is Norwegian. He uh, lives up in Hemstall. He made this out of bone. He also he does bone work and woodworking. So he made this one. It's an odd shaped one. This is a very wide one. So I would use this with fat yarn in Oslo. Uh, but I, it's also long. Uh, I like long needles. So you can see it's even longer than my other bone needle. And this is, by the way, made with, I thought it was bone, but actually, no, I think it's antler. Yeah, I think it's antler because you can see the groove in there. I suspect that's the shin of a... Uh, it could be bone. I forgot. I, it's usually bone that he works with, but I just, yeah, for some reason... It, it looks like bone, and if it uh, has that kind of rough area, then it's from the inside of the bone. Closer to the marrow, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, because it should be bone with him, but it, anyway, it's it's quite cool. But it's it's longer than I normally have. This one is long too, but I like long needles because I can have more to grab onto with my bad wrists. But he also has this. He made a chain for it in silver. This little silver piece here, and the idea is that it fits in there, 
and then turns and you can wear it. But because of the length of it, or maybe it's just because I'm crooked, it would I would have a tendency to bump it off. So I would probably tape the sucker on the backside or something. I don't know what I would do. If I would wear it that way or just put a little piece of tape, I don't know. I hang it high on your body so it doesn't, doesn't ever touch I got big ground. boobs, man. They go pretty high up. They'll push those. I hang it from a boob. You don't get <laughs> your boobs all the time normally, do you? Yeah. So I don't know, but I would, I, uh, I like, uh, I really like the idea of this. I thought that was a good idea. I was just so afraid I'll lose it. So obviously you wouldn't lose the silver, but you'd lose the bone. So which is more valuable, the silver or the handmade bone needle? The handmade bone needle. There is no debate there because you, you have like... Uh, By the way, this is the other side. Five or six grams of silver in that thing. Yeah. Multiply it by eight, then you have the price pretty much. Yeah. That thing took him probably... Three or four hours to make. Okay, okay. So now you're you're telling him he doesn't need socks that take me forever to make. I'm telling him <laughs> that uh, his time is probably <laughs> worth more than eight kilometers per hour. Yeah, no, no, he is. But this also took some time to make, and then he's got the the rings in there that are based on uh, patterns that you see in finds. Anyway, uh, so I have to make his socks now. I actually have to do them. It's no longer. I think I can. So I have this leftover yarn, but it's it's soft and uh, it's super wash, and it's white, of course, so no spit splicing. Well, you could, but no matter how clean my hands are, it'll still get a color on it. Uh, so I found this one out of Superwash. It's not quite the same. It's slightly thinner, but I'm hoping it'll work because I really don't think I have enough to do. Um, I was, I was going to make them slightly bigger than ankle socks. Uh, but this is the this is the right side. It goes this way, actually. This is also the mystery stitch. This is February stitch. Uh, right side, wrong side. And then next week I'll also tell you how I, I um, join, I do a lazy join. Sometimes the lazy join works out well, sometimes you can see it a little. But, um, so this is how I make my socks from top down. Uh, this is where his heel's going to go, so it actually goes like this and then the foot goes that way. So I have to make him socks now. And of course you, you do these in tandem, so that I have to, now that I've done, this is inside out. Uh, so now that I've done this much I have to do the same amount on that one so they're going to be really beautiful socks by the way uh his as soon as he wears these with viking shoes they're going to turn colors but you know not my problem <laughs> but he wanted a neutral color so this is good he could dye them if he wants to I don't know how well they dye if they're super wash but this is going to be fun so anyway this is the stitch we're doing next month and I have to finish these socks now because he gave me something for them so smarty pants knew what he was doing when he did that didn't he <laughs> But, oh, what a fun needle. I can't wait to try that as well. But I will use that with fat yarn also, probably a hat. Uh, okay, and then I can show, I have to split splice some yarn on here, and then we can, I think I did one row, maybe not quite yet. No, here's where I changed. Okay, so we got to babble a little bit more because I need to have my yarn going that way. This is F1. This is our regular with F1, and this is plated edge, so the top rows go the other way. But then I'll have my X. <laughs> so I can get under the X, Carl. <laughs> so, how has your week been going otherwise? Tell me a story while I splice some yarn and do some more here. Well, you have been there for most of it. No, I've been indoors for the most of it. You've been outside. Yeah, it's wet and slippery everywhere. Wet and slippery everywhere. The tourists are well prepared, though. They are dressed for the, dressed for the weather and... Um, I've seen the them Spanish here. people yesterday had the, what looks like sheep poles, ski poles, the walking double poles, walking yeah. uh, spikes. Yep. Yeah, because they're walking, the walking poles actually are spiked on the bottom, just like cross-country ski poles, not like a... I do one small, well, actually, I do two small uh, changes to my guided tour when it's this slippery. Yeah. I don't go up to the top of the hill to do the gods. I do them in the chief hall. Because Why? I would be just spinning in the hill. I wouldn't be able to get up there. And the other one is uh, because you kind of have a main street in front of the chieftain's hall. So that's more, more people walk there. So it's better sanded and there is less ice. But you only go to the boat to guide at the boat. So uh, going to the boat the normal way from the flag to the boat is not a good idea. Uh, go from the flag <laughs> past the chieftain hall and then to the boat. Yeah. So two tiny little changes uh, to accommodate for uh, very, very slippery weather. 
And I'm really hoping today is the last day because mm -hmm. if it is proper heat tomorrow, it's all gone. Yeah. They were supposed to, somebody was trying to do a photo shoot in there today, hoping the snow would last, but it all melted. Yeah. I... Yeah. Anyhow, uh, so that'll be, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how their pictures look. Um, did you, did we ever tell them what they were, what we're doing up at the top of the hill? Not what we, you and I are doing, that's questionable, but it's not quite, what is the project going on at the top of the hill? I'm very confused now about what questionable thing. Rogid, what is he doing up on, Fjallar, what's he doing up at the top of the hill this year? He's <laughs> making his, uh, halfling holes. Halfling holes, can you explain the halfling hole project well, in the Viking age? Uh, the idea is to build uh, something that approximates the Icelandic style of house, where you kind of build a house into the ground and then uh, have walls and roof made out of uh, peat bog. Hmm. Grophus, it's called in Norwegian. I don't know the Grophus, yeah, uh, pit house. Yeah. Grophus means pit house. A group is a hole in the ground. Uh, basically, a big hole in the ground. You can, you can cook in a group, in a pit. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's a pit house. Uh, I see Kiwi says she doesn't like making socks either, and she wants to try making needles. You know, I tried to make a needle once with a popsicle stick. It worked. But then I realized needle making is not quite my passion. <laughs> I didn't have the patience for it. But uh, it's fun to try anyway. Uh, they also, well, if you're going to work with bone uh, or antler, you definitely want to wear a mask uh, because those little fibers, even if you're not using a machine, will get stuck up your nose. Okay, we're ready for under the X, Carl. Are you ready to get under your X? Not really. <laughs> Okay, I have to get my yarn on this side. I have a huge mess here. Try to get a plain background. Anyway, so now that I've done one row, you can see here it's bladed edge because I went on top. Um, now I have the X's lined up. Like she says, <laughs> you're having too much fun with this, Carl. Yeah, so now I have this part. Is the, So you got the, this loop that you were just in, I believe. Yep, yeah. and this loop here. So if you go under where they cross... That's under the X. So now I will do my arboga, but I'm going to go back to regular edge. No more plated edge. No, I guess I have to stick with a damn plated edge. Okay, fine. Plated edge it is because otherwise I can only... I, well, I didn't want to do more than one row to test it anyway, but I would have to do plated edge. Under the X, which was under the, the this one from the loop you've just went in, kind of, and then under this loop where they cross. That was under the X. We were going to try to do this last week, and I knew I was doing it wrong. No, it has to be a plated edge, so under the working yarn. Okay, I'll do one more, and then I'll turn the camera and do the rest a little bit more without... So under... Where is it? Under the X. So it's fun to see. Anyway, you can do the same stitch, but you can make it look so differently just by changing... Um, just by changing your connection. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and I'll turn it back. I can hit the button. It's hard to hit the button. There we go. How's your beer? Are you still enjoying it? Have it's you changed good. your mind? It's, uh, it's not super good. I don't think... The I don't think it's worthy to get on the short list of the bears I buy for fun outside of YouTube. Mm. But it's for YouTube bear, it's good. So for meaning there are no bloody lemons in it. <laughs> Mangoes, pineapple, grapefruit, a little bit of citrus. Summer's coming. <laughs> they seem to like to put that stuff in summer beer. Torben, you got to come to do. Torben has to come to do a summer beer tasting. We talked about it last year. Didn't pull it off. All we did was feed this popcorn beer to the Swede. Uh, so yep. Yeah. You have to try that. Uh, by the way, which... Uh, okay, now, so obviously the outer beers can't quite make it to your short list of beers that you drink at home. Um, well, they because could easily if, if they were in the, if yeah, I could just the get shop. more of them. Yeah, that's the thing. So they would be, but if they couldn't. But what is your choice so far of the ones... Your, your list of beers that you would you have at home now? Because you can't touch the YouTube beers until you've tried it. Uh, Chimay and Duel, probably. Yeah, Anne Moreau knows that one. Belgian representing. Yeah. That was the Trappist, wasn't it? 
Duvel, at yeah. least the Chimay the Chim is a Trappist. I'm not. No, the trap. Yeah, that's what I'm talking not about. Not sure about the, the duel. No, I think it was just the. The duel Chimay category was... is like triple Belgian or something. Yeah. Okay. So what else is on your list? Uh, the Norwegian version of duel, the Chin Brewery, is Bevel. Yeah. Uh, Bevelen. My father loves it, so uh, I buy it when we go to Zelia. Yeah, Shin is K I N, and those are the ones that have the same guy on the drawn on the label every time, but wearing something different. Yeah. Yeah. And the Berberlin is that the that's the one where he has a pitchfork in his hand, but is not the devil. He has a pitch uh, pitchfork and horns, so I'm pretty sure he is the devil. Oh, he does. And have... also, I've taken his eyebrows and turned them down like this. <laughs> We found a new one for you to try. That's on the that's on the YouTube. Uh, the YouTube beer is basically any beer I think looks fun or conversation worthy and probably tastes like shit. Almost always. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the YouTube beers. But right now I was getting the ones that were for winter time. So that was the last of the winter beer. It's a lot of dark beers for winter. We did that uh, last time too with the. Yeah. Dark as an Estonian winter's night and the dark as a northern Norwegian winter's night. Both of them were stouts. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm not a bear expert, but I'm starting to draw the conclusion that I probably don't like stouts because I wasn't impressed with either one of them. Oh, I used to like stouts. So anyway, so it's uh, mango and citrus in the summer. <laughs> And dark beer in the winter, is that what the theme I, is? I think, uh, as a general rule, if you mm. put lemon in your beer, it just can't be saved. There is nothing you can do yeah. to make this beer drinkable after this point. What other beers did you have on your shortlist, by the way? Uh, the, yeah, was it Chin? And it was uh, uh, Chimay Duvel, regular Duvel, of course, you had on there. Do you have any others? You've come a long way since Corona, Corona with a lemon. <laughs> Which is what he used to have before we actually made this a fun thing for him. Yeah? I think. Oh, you're thinking it's a brain fart going on. That's what a brain fart looks like, people. <laughs> no, there are some other ones, but they're not quite at the level where I buy them in any quantity for fun. It's like I will buy them occasionally because, huh, I seem to remember this was pretty good. But uh, it's not, they're not really stacking up to the other ones, so. Yeah, oh, by the way, Audrey was mentioning, could I put a knot on there and then, yeah, I could do that too, actually, put a little rubber band or something in there to keep it to, to grip more on this thing. Um, Albert said something really fun for you. He bought, he's got a birthday coming up on Monday, so he bought himself a present. He got himself an expensive WH40K fig today. Because it's his birthday on Monday, and he will be busy on that day. Uh, what have I 40,000 what now? Uh, let's see. Figure today, uh, because it's his birthday. Um, and all Torben asked him which one did he buy. He got the Imperial Knight Dominus. Uh, and, of course, Torben started drooling and said, that's a lot of guns. Uh, and Torben says, be sure to buy enough bolt gun metal. <laughs> Uh, and Albert says, yep, he has a painted scheme in mind, but needs to find a few things for the basing. What did do you think? Did you understand any of that? I did! Did you? Yes. I, I know, get your geek on, boy. Do you have anything you want to say about that? I've been doing this of thing since Jesus wore short pants, so yes, I understand. Carl knows how to speak troll. Would you like to speak troll? Come on. This isn't trolls. No, speak troll. Just because I know you can. Why? <laughs> What's the purpose of that? In extreme, I'm sorry, do that again. In for the camera, everyone. Speak troll, Carl. I don't understand why you think this is entertaining. <laughs> Are you making fun of me? No, no, I would never do such a thing. <laughs> Outer likes it. Okay, so now we're going to see... <laughs> I always think it's fun or entertaining. Okay, so this was the under the X. The under the X is the most recent row. So this was, let's see. This was M1 down here. And then when we get up to the top here, this row, this is what under the X looks like from the working side, the right side. Go on, sorry. What did you do under? <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. Why are you laughing so loud? 
What, 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 what did I say? This is what under the X looks like from the working side. It's very important you know these things. <laughs> Jeez, you know, and you'd think needle biting was an, in, you know, an innocent craft. <laughs> Apparently they're teaching. I guess I'm not allowed to go under the X anymore. <laughs> okay, under the X from the working side, but <laughs> hold your hat, people. Carl, if I do this, now you know what under the X looks like if you're working on the back side. <laughs> so under the X from the back side. <laughs> That's what that looks like there. It does. It has a little bit of a bend to it. It's curling inward, of course. Uh, it wants to curl in actually a lot more than it did before. <laughs> There's nothing I can say to not make this sound Charlotte worthy, is it? Charlotte likes it when things get a little silly. <laughs> Robin's over there going, well, well. <laughs> and then Albert points out he also has a night paladin. <laughs> so just <laughs> there you go. Keeping things on the um, not for children side. <laughs> you would have thought needle binding would be so risky. I, I don't think the night paladin is all about mm. Okay, we're a little bit over, but I got one more thing to show. So we can, we're going to keep going, especially because I have technical difficulties. So now I'm going to do one regular one to get things back on track with my arboga. Uh, and then I'm going to do a regular, not a plated edge. Maybe one more from F1. So now we're going to do the F1R1. Uh, I think it was. Let me just double check. I have uh, Sana's Neue Lockentag page up for reference here. Yeah, F1 plus R1, which is uh, F1, which is that, but one from the reverse. So that one, F1, R1 on the inside there, in your technical backside. So, and then you do the stitches normal. And then it doesn't matter if you're plated edge or not at this point, I don't think. Anyway, so F1 plus R1. If this is awkward to do, you can actually, she points out on there, she has really good tips on her page. It's the needle binding Bible after all. Um, you can flip the work this way a little bit when you do it. Uh, so do it like this and then kind of tip it inwards and it comes up automatically. You can see right there a little bit easier what you're grabbing. Is that going sick for you too, Carl? I'm taking it from the reverse. I have to see what I'm grabbing so I can flip the edge over a little bit. No? <laughs> sick has. You know, it doesn't take... Uh, it's, this is not for the faint of hearted, this needle binding. <laughs> so anyway, now we'll see what that does. And that'll be the last to uh, play with our boga until uh, next week when we figure out what the stitch is. Or not until next week. Uh, the, the, the stitch, the unknown stitch... But you, now you can go back and look at it. You can examine. You can try to figure out which stitch I was going to do next in February for the stitch of the month. You can make something with it or just try it or make a little sample. It doesn't matter. But we've decided this year we need to do stitch of the month. So you can, um, uh, let's see. So you can give it a try. But it's then I just thought I'll use the weeks to see what the different connections do to it. But anyway, so... You gotta figure out what is this stitch called. You can see my joints are not too beautiful, but I will probably steam block this one. Uh, and we'll find out next week if you guessed correct or not. Uh, if it's easier to see it in the white um, yarn, it's this stitch. That's the technical right side. So, I'll let you know one thing it's not a finished stitch, it's not in the finished family. So, but anyway. So we'll see what that is. Do you have anything more you want to add while I do a little bit more of this F1R1, Carl? Any uh, interesting stories? I need a little bit more of a prompt than that. You need a little more prompt than that. How's your beer? You finished it. Like, yeah. you have nothing left. Oh, you still got a couple of things in your snobbles. Yeah, no, they no, very, very hard to contain. Yeah. Uh, have you given any thought to the new t-shirt designs that we have to present? No, not really. No. Uh, we don't know. It's the boss that picks what she likes. It would have been but... better to have a little bit more time on it. Because yeah. <laughs> we have we like can... three days and we just found out. <laughs> we could find somebody who could make art in uh, the same mm -hmm. quality as the old t-shirts. Yeah. 
but that isn't done. Well, we're keeping the classic ones that are that our logo, isn't but done in the two shakes of the lamb style. No. You have to have uh, you have to have some time for it. But our another thing we could have done if we yeah. had enough time is to make a competition out of it. Yeah. I thought so too. But uh, but we only have a couple days, so it's like literally we won't know until next. I mean uh, next we week. We just it's... have to slap something together and hope it doesn't suck. Yeah. Uh, I did uh, t uh, tell Tamara. Yeah. Tamara is uh, from Spain. She is our shop leader. She's here in the summer times, uh, and she also does a lot of design work. And she has been wanting, itching to have new T-shirt designs put out. So, I wrote her immediately and told her uh, if she was playing any ideas within her head, uh, time to get it out now. Uh, so she's actually quite excited, and she's going to see what she can come up with. But because she's coming to work for us 1st of April again, if actually the 20th of March, uh, then um, she can write the hours when she gets here. So she'll still get paid for these hours, which is nice. Um, but, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what she comes up with. I do like the idea of it's so hard to be a Viking, or it's hard to be a Viking on a T-shirt again. So I really hope she we find something with that. Yeah, um... Ah, I'm forgetting to do the R1 here. There. F1, R1. Okay, if I didn't mess it up, I got a little bit we can show now. Just finish this one stitch. Uh, drawback of long needles is you have to thread the end of your yarn through the last couple stitches. Or the needle. Okay, let's see what we got. Mm, ah, down, 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 down. And... So, it's about this far in, I think. Yeah, you can see it starts to change around here. So, this is the F1R1. It's much more dense. It's much more smooth. There's no ridge. If you see on the side, whereas the other one kind of had a little bit more. So, it's even more woven looking, actually. It's quite cool. And then on the inside, it looks like the top row here more like a braid so that one actually kind of looks like fun and it's not it, it's not too much more thick i thought it was going to be super thick but it's not much more thicker it's still thinner than oslo would be with this yarn but it's kind of cool to see but you can you can see the different effects you get um just by playing and then of course you've got the b1 here with the ridge and then the regular f1 so if you want to get your geek on there you go you can see the difference but it's the same stitch just different connection but you can see that M1 really wants to bend inward. <laughs> That's where the M1 row is. But uh, okay, I gotta catch up on chat here, and then uh, um, I'll put that here. You can examine it for a minute. <laughs> and then we should probably get ready to get off here. That sounds really bad considering the under the X we just had. Um, Max says you sound like a troll that smoked too many cigarettes, Carl. He does smoke too many cigarettes, so that probably is what he was. He went out to go have one. <laughs> I'm going to remind him of that when he comes in. Anne says, uh, Duva is no, Duville is no Trappist. It's just one of a kind. Okay, yeah, because there's one that's called Chimay, or Chimay, C-H-A-M-A-Y, and I thought that was the Trappist, but maybe we're thinking of the Duchess one that was a Trappist. We have one of those for YouTube that he hasn't tried yet. Um, what day next week? It's going to be uh, Saturday again next week. No, nope. Yeah, we'll keep going on Saturdays for now, at least until, as long as we can, unless it changes. Unless something comes up, uh, Saturday is the easiest day to do YouTube. Um, so yeah, next week, Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, Torben has 10k points in High Elf Army. Oh, you guys are really getting your geek on here. Because uh, Albert also has a Knight Paladin and a Knight Army, and Torben has 10k points in High Elf Army. Does everybody else, who else is doing this uh, War Warhammer? Old world, he didn't, Torben didn't jump on the AOS wagon. Oh, this is kind of funny. Uh, Torben said he also used to have, uh, used his army mostly to kick Carl's ass. Oh, I bet you wish you were here now. I'm Torben said he used to use, um, some of his AOS figures, uh, but love, what is it, um, he used his army mostly to kick Carl's ass. Do you have any comment on this, Carl? Elves suck. I'm sorry, say that again. Elves suck. Okay, is that fighting words by the look on your face? Shoot the little bastard that never go into close combat. Oh man, he just took it orc style. Can you do an impression of an elf? 
No, I'm not that feminine. <laughs> not even in bookmall could I pause for that. Bookmall or in Oslo, Norwegian. <laughs> Albert said uh, he likes some of the AOS figures, but um, loves the old world ones more. They might have. Uh, he might have a look at a small army after he's done with the ones he's working on in 40k. Uh, and then uh, uh, I would, I, um, the Duvel, by the way, is not a Trappist. Uh, it was a different one. And Audra, or Max said, uh, you sounded like a troll that smoked too many cigarettes, which I thought was quite funny. Because <laughs> you are. Uh, you sounded, when you did your troll impression, you sound like a troll who smoked too many cigarettes. Well, troll doesn't smoke cigarettes. They eat dwarfs. That's the same thing. <laughs> they eat dwarves, the same thing? <laughs> they smoke the dwarves? No, they eat them. Do they smoke elves? No, they eat them. <laughs> Uh, Robin says you should reach out to Yannicka to make a design. Oh, yeah, no, but yannicka has got her own t-shirts, so, and we do sell them on the store in the store and commission. Uh, so Yannick, no, I would love to have Yannicka did a design, but, uh, she, um, that she deserves the, she makes her own t-shirts, so she, um, deserves to have the right to get her own profit on her own t-shirts. And, uh, so that I think she should be able to keep her own profits on those. Uh, Garcia, so see you next week. Arlene, Audra, everybody. Uh, Shime is the Trappist, by the way. Okay, yes, we did have that one, right? Uh, he said, yeah, go wag and suck it, Carl. <laughs> that was torment. <laughs> okay, so Saturday next week, we'll figure out what this stitch is. And I, I swear to God, I will finish one of these projects. Obviously not the mood blanket, though, but I will catch up. I will get all my extra rows in there. I have only, I'm only, what, uh, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday <laughs> behind. Not good, but I am keeping a little log anyway. But I have a lot of catching up to do on my mood blanket. Yeah, what's the color for floating and no sleep? Flooding and no sleep. Oh, that's going to be the... Um... Yeah, we haven't decided. Crap. I've got two different blues. I didn't know if I was saving that for like a really calm day. But let's just face it, those aren't going to happen. Um, and I have... Oh, wait, the purple kind of falls into the red category if I have too much stress. So which one? I have I have two different blues, though. And I have a group, no, green, we've designed it, green is sick. There's the blue. So I have blue, and then, how many natural disasters or freakishly out of control days are we going to have? This is good, Vong, and I guess we get quite a few of them, though. Because I'm going to, this is for the, the extreme weather day and the, and the extreme pipe issue day. <laughs> You get Both days involved flooding. You get extreme weather in Good Morning, maybe two days a year. That's what the big avalanches. In. Yeah, something uh, where, where the Sunday blocks off the road. The big avalanches comes on hot days or cold days. They don't usually. The last on one we had when that blocked the road was in September. Yeah. Uh, so. But it's not extreme weather. So what do you think? I have a little bit of gray. I have two colors of blue. I'm not sure how many more moose wings I'm going to have. But, the, but the, this the is the beyond my control mood. The important thing is that, uh, well, this is about your mood, not mm. about uh, meteorology or No, no, no. Uh, this uh, is geology. beyond my control, like way beyond my control. Mm. The, the powers because that Because I can vividly imagine there being a big avalanche and you are happy as a clam. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can be uh, yeah. uh, unhappy and annoyed in a nice day uh, when the weather is nice. All right, so water exploding in the basement. <laughs> Unhappy. Uh, well, I do have to happy. say, as uh, an eyewitness to this incident, that you did seem to freak out a little bit. All right. Yeah, well, it's not a stress day. We weren't quite stressed. We were too tired to be stressed. All right, no, no, I think it's going to have to be this one because I don't think we're going to have too many of these days. And then I have a blue mood swing somewhere. All right, good plan. It's gonna be this one. I have to catch up. I have a lot to do. No project anxiety here whatsoever. I can do this, and I'm gonna finish Runa's patching. Okay, I'm good. We're gonna have to go because I got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> you wanna say goodbye, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> In troll. Bye. <laughs> you sound like a cat puked. <laughs> Okay, see you guys on Saturday then, okay? Uh, light blue for water disasters. I like that one. It looks more complete opposite what it stands for. <laughs> uh, they ever, well, they're actually, Aldra says blue too. Okay, beyond my control, natural disaster, blue. 
-hmm. Okay, it's good. We'll do that. All right. See you Saturday. Thanks for putting up with me <laughs> for coming late. I was on time. <laughs>